Connie, how are you? All right. Go right like that. Then you can hear. Right here. It's on. Jeremiah. Yes, please. Yes. Good morning, Newman. Is there anyone here from the Kovach family who could bring up the gifts? No. Which family? Kovach. Anybody here from the Kovach family to bring up the... Right over there. morning. Welcome to the Newman Center. Happy Sunday to all. Very happy to be celebrating with everyone this morning. As we gather, our opening song is going to be The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. 
Number 712, the king of love, my shepherd is. Number 712, please sing along with us. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Our opening song today, So Lovely, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. When we think of Irish songs, we might not think of that one, but it is a beautiful text from St. Columba, or sometimes called St. Columban, or St. Columbar. So different names, but the same saint from Ireland, one of the uh, let's see, that would be one of the triumvirate, I think, of saints from Ireland, Patrick, Columba, and uh, Bridget, St. Bridget. So anyway, little, little cocktail uh, <laughs> tidbit for you there. Just, you know, use that somewhere. I'm sure they'll uh, think so highly of you. Uh, as we come together as God's folks this morning, people of God, we call to mind our sins, but know that the Good Shepherd, the King of Love, he is the one who continues to pursue us so that we're brought to the fullness of the kingdom of light to live in the splendor of the Eucharistic table. We come to you as sinners with a contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom there is no firm foundation, without you nothing is holy, give us an abundance of your mercy and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to the things that are eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them. But I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them, and bring them back to their meadow. Therefore, they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them, so that they need no longer fear and tremble. And none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David, 
As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, who you once were far off, have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to the Lord. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. I remember when I was young, driving with my father on a Sunday morning during the summertime. Right about now in the middle of July. I remember we went to Mr. Donut on Niagara Falls Boulevard. We went there for him to get a cup of coffee and to get donuts for us kids. It was Sunday, and nothing except the donut shop was open. The world was shut because of Sunday blue laws. The streets were driving, we were driving on empty. And on the seventh day, God rested. The time in the late 1960s and early 1970s was, different, was a different time from now. My dad went to work Monday through Friday, and my mom stayed home with us five kids. On Saturday, we all worked around the house, and on Sunday before Mass, my dad would get in the car for his pilgrimage to Mr. Donut. I would often go with him and sit in the front seat in the passenger side of the station wagon with the window open, feeling the breeze and appreciating the blue sky of summer. The rest of our Sunday would consist of mass and then my mom would make a Sunday dinner. The day was ours to enjoy. I saw my parents turn off from the week and relax. Sunday had a feel unique to other days of the week. I didn't perceive it as holy. Rather, looking back on it now, it was a holy time. Today, it seems that nothing turns off, neither our minds nor our devices. I looked at my computer and realized I hadn't turned it off in over two months. Until recently, I wore an eye watch to make sure I could access those emails if my computer wasn't in viewing distance. The goal, to always be electronically on. But all I've noticed is my attention span getting smaller, while at the same time, my mind wandering less into the presence of anything, much less God. I keep a book of the Liturgy of the Hours beside me on the porch in the back of my house. It's easier to pray there because it's quiet. Last Sunday evening, <coughs> when it was still bright out during evening prayer time, I put the book down and just looked out my backyard into the woods. And I swear to you, I saw a deer running across my field of view. The leaves were moving and the deer was running, and it was like a pulse up and down. It was like the heartbeat of God showing itself in nature. It was holy. It felt like I was still praying. Today's gospel finds Jesus looking at his disciples and realizing that they were tired in need of rest. He told them to go somewhere quiet, free of noise, to rest and recharge. He tells us to do that too. 
Specifically, on the seventh day, God rested. I think I can understand what Jesus was talking about when he said it was time to rest. We can't continue our work of adding to God's kingdom until we take a minute. Rest is not a reward for the work performed. It's an integral part of the work. There's a scene in the movie about Mother Teresa's life when she meets up with a sister who had started another order. Mother Teresa is working herself to the bone night and day in a constant effort to begin her new ministry. When Mother Teresa asks her, asks her how she was able to successfully begin her new order, the sister stares and says, the first thing I do is take one day to rest and recharge. If I burn myself out, then there's nothing to give. Nothing will come of my efforts. One can't drink out of an empty cup. God demands we rest and recharge on his energy. In short, God demands that we rest. Rest is a verb. It is not defined as inactivity. Rest gives us time to think about what our life is and, de and decide again what we choose to keep or to change. It's time to let God in and redefine who he wants us to be. The poet John Lubbock from the 1800s once said, to lie sometimes on the grass, under the trees, on a summer's day, participating and observing God's creation, listening to the murmur of the water or watch the clouds float by across the blue sky is by no means a waste of time. Amen. I invite those who are able to who stand to please do so as we offer our prayers of the faithful. In faith, hope, and love, we come together at the table of Christ as we prepare to celebrate the liturgy of the Eucharist. We bring our needs, our concerns, our prayers to our loving Father. As all students reach midsummer, that they prepare themselves to rest, relax, recharge for the coming fall semester, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those that are sick, and there are many among this parish that are or are touched by those that are sick, that are ill, we pray to the Lord that they, hold on. <laughs> we pray that they find solace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray? Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. <coughs> Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, too, for all of our beloved dead, the recently deceased, those who have no one to pray for them, and especially we remember today the repose of the soul of Jane Kovach. For Jane and all who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, too, for those who are victims of domestic violence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we have three, chil we have three children being baptized today, uh, that the great bright light of baptism will shine forever in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. You have blessed the merciful, O Lord, for they will receive mercy. In our prayers, we ask you to give us more deeply the qualities of mercy and compassion for others in our lives as we offer their prayers, these prayers for them and for ourselves 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing our offertory song, I Has Not Seen, number 728. I Has Not Seen, number 728. my brothers and sisters that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty may the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church accept these offerings we bring from the abundance of your gifts and through the power working and through the powerful working of your grace these most sacred mysteries will sanctify us in our present life and lead us to eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ Jesus our Lord. By your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free. He is the life that fills us with joy. Through your Son you gather men and women who you've made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the Holy Spirit. So now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as together we acclaim.
are holy and glorified, O God, who loves the human race and always walks with us on our journey of life. Blessed too is your Son, Jesus Christ, when we're gathered by his love and he's present in our midst. And when, as once he did for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. So, Father, most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to make holy these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, the night before he suffered, at the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the sacrifice, the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ, which has been entrusted to us. Grant by the power of the Spirit of your love, the Holy Spirit, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son. Confirm us in a bond of communion together with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Bishop Fisher, the clergy, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking at the signs of the times by the light of faith, may always devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and their pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the road to your kingdom. Remember also all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Welcome them to rejoice in your presence that they may see you face to face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may enter into that eternal dwelling place and live with you forever with the Blessed Virgin Mary Mother of God Saint Joseph with the Apostles the martyrs John Newman and with all the Saints we will praise you we will exalt you through your son Jesus Christ through him and with him and in him O God Almighty Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let's pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the joyful coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace is my gift to you. Look not in our sins, but the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign and prayer for peace. Peace with you, wife. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Joyful, blessed are those called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing our communion song, Behold the Lamb, number 939. Behold the Lamb, number 939.
Let us pray. O Lord, we have consumed the divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant that this gift, which he himself gives us with a love beyond all telling, may bring us to the fullness of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Chicken lady, you got an announcement? There we go. And yeah, yeah. Take a seat. It's going to be a long one. No. <laughs> Good morning. Um, today is the last day to pick up your uh, inspirational letter from Father Paul, along with a few raffle tickets. So if you haven't done that yet, please do so after Mass. And pick up your friend or your neighbor or your less for us to mail tomorrow. Um, as most of you saw coming in, uh, the dinner tickets are now on sale, $15 for adults, $8 for children. Unfortunately, we're having a glitch with our credit card system today, which we hope to resolve within the week. Uh, so today we can only take checks and cash, but um, next week we'll be able to take your money every way. <laughs> um, auction and basket items are coming in beautifully as always. Your generosity is so appreciated. Uh, but please feel free to continue to bring in auction and basket items. And if you don't bring them on Sundays, you can drop them off during the week. The office is happy to take them. Um, 
We're going to try something new this year with the auction. We are going to have online bidding. You're going to be able to download an app onto your phone and be able to bid on a portion of the auction items. Uh, we know a lot of people are going away, they travel. This way it gives you an opportunity to be a part of it even though you're on the road. Um, it's a really simple system. If I think I can do it, I know you all can do it. Um, so the weekend of August 3rd and 4th, we're going to have people prepared to help you download the app, scan the QR code, however you want to do it, in the back room after all the masses, and be able to have you up and running. It will go live on August 3rd. So um, we think it's going to add a lot of excitement, a lot of competition. We know you people like competition. Um, and, uh, and really be something easy and fun for us to do a little differently. Uh, the volunteer sheets still need some things filled in, so please think about that. And one of the things we're a little short on this year so far are restaurant gift cards. So if you're in a restaurant, you know somebody, please ask them for a gift card. We have letters if you need something um, for them to, to have. Uh, also today, um, separate or in the newsletter, I know a lot of you don't take the newsletter because you read it online, we have this little insert. If you want to share it with some friends, there's some in the newsletters or just by themselves. So please think about that and sharing the word. And um, I really appreciate those people who buy their dinner tickets early because I have to do that chicken count thing. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you, man. Vacation Bible School begins Monday and children should arrive by 9 a.m. every morning and picked up at noon. Also, uh, we have the Immigrant Welcome Dinner. We're co-sponsoring it with uh, Justice for Immigrants, and uh, that will be this Tuesday. You've probably heard about it. Uh, I, I, I'm not very organized, and if you've seen my office, I can't find anything. So uh, if you volunteered to come, please show up. <laughs> don't expect me to call you, because I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so uh, anyway. But if the volunteers could be here by 3 p.m., that would be great. The Bridge Lecture Series continues this Wednesday this, at 7 p.m. The lecture is How You Are Influenced by Social Media. Now, everybody knows uh, Santiago from El Buen Amigo, I think, because he comes here uh, to Mass quite a bit, and he just ha you're here today. Stand up so people can just remember who you are. Okay, yeah. Well, I visited his store last a uh, couple weeks ago, and it's really it's in tough shape, huh? It's in some ways, yeah. So he's got a few notices from the city, is that right? The building inspectors? Or? You've got to get some work done there, yes. So if there's any carpenters, handy, uh, handy, what do we call them, handy people? Handy people, handy men, handy women. Uh, but uh, Santiago, he didn't know I was going to announce this this week, and it just, by coincidence, he's here. And I also say in the announcement, if you want to contact me, I can give you more information. But I know it would be greatly appreciated if you spread the word. Uh, you know, a few hours, a couple of a day or so would be a great help, I know, to Santiago. Also, along those same lines, our wooden tabernacle, uh, the, the lock just cannot be fixed. And so uh, we need to uh, have that taken care of. They took the whole tabernacle down to a locksmith, but uh, it needs uh, really a woodworker to put a new lock into the whole whole mechanism into that. If anybody you know, knows anybody who can do that type of work, or if you're able to, please, again, please contact me. OK, uh, I know there was something else, but I can't remember it. So. So uh, please stand if you're able at this point. The Lord be with you. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he let his face shine on you. May he look on you with kindness and give you peace. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Please join us in singing our closing song, City of God, number 766. City of God, number 766, and everyone have a wonderful rest of their Sunday.
so much, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Yeah, we'll go over that one. I'm going to learn this one.